My book, Technology versus Humanity, was published in 2016, but much of what I said in the book feels very much like a great fit for 2024. So here is a slightly edited introduction to the book, spoken with my own AI-generated voice. How can humanists prevail in the face of exponential and all-encompassing technological change? Our world is entering a period of truly transformative change where many of us will be surprised by the scale and pace of developments we simply hadn't anticipated. These exponential technological advances have tremendous potential, and with these opportunities come tremendous new responsibilities. In the past, each radical shift in human society has been driven primarily by one key enabling factor from wood, stone, bronze, and iron, to steam, electricity, factory automation, and the internet. Today I see a set of science and technology-enabled megashifts coming together that will redraw not only commerce, culture, and society, but also our very biology and our ethics. Let me be clear, my book Technology vs. Humanity written in 2016 is neither a celebration of the rapidly onrushing technology revolution nor a lament on the fall of civilization. The good future cannot be designed based on blind optimism or paralyzing fear. My goal with this book back in 2016 was to amplify and accelerate the debate about how to ensure that we guide, harness, and control science and technology developments so that they fulfill their primary purpose, which should be serving humanity and furthering human flourishing. My ambition still is the same, to take the discussion beyond the realms of the exuberant technologists, learned academics, and thoughtful analysts to express a set of concerns that are nowhere near to being addressed or even recognized by the population at large. I am also hoping to give real presence and current urgency to a future that seems beyond comprehension and unworthy of attention for many. As such, my book was deliberately designed to be a passionate discussion starter for what I consider to be the world's most important conversation. And this has only intensified since the publication of my book. My role here is to open up and capitalize the debate, and therefore I have set out to craft a spirited manifesto rather than a blueprint or a guidebook. I, I believe we need to step back from an expert-led debate about what's possible and how to achieve it. Instead, I think we must start with a more fundamental exploration of what role we want these transformative technologies to play in serving humanity. Just because we can, it doesn't mean we should. To help guide this exploration, I have set out what I believe to be the driving forces of change and presented an assessment of their potential impacts and implications. I have highlighted many fundamental questions raised by the accelerated, and in many cases exponential, pace of development across multiple fields of science and technology. I argue that we must place human happiness and well-being at the heart of the decision-making and governance processes that will shape future investments in scientific and technological research, development and commercialization, because, in the end, technology is not what we seek, but how we seek. I go on to present a range of different scenarios on how things might play out depending on the development path we take to the future. I conclude with a starter set of ideas to kickstart discussions on how to choose the best path for humanity and how to make good decisions along the way. I have structured my thoughts into 12 key chapters. Chapter 1, A Prologue to the Future. Halfway through the century's third decade, we are at a critical pivot point in technology evolution, a hinge, a hinge moment when change will not only become combinatory and exponential, but inevitable and irreversible. Here I argue that now is our last chance to question the nature of these coming challenges. From artificial intelligence to human genome editing, striking a balance will be the key. Chapter 2, Technology versus People. In this chapter, I explain why technology may increasingly simulate and replace humans, but it can never become us. Te technology has no ethics, and therefore its imminent entry into our most private lives and biological processes must be negotiated as a top civic and corporate priority. I examine the nature of ethics as a human signifier and differentiator, transcending differences of religion and culture. Chapter 3, The Megashifts. Digital transformation has been touted as the biggest paradigm shift across enterprises and the public sector, when in fact it is just one of 10 megashifts that will alter the face of human life forever. These megashifts are not slow evolutionary processes which we will have time to integrate and adapt to. Rather, they will trigger a tsunami of disruption, what I now call permachange, potentially equating to a mass extinction event for much of the existing economic system. Chapter 4, Automating Society. This chapter challenges the pervasive yet ill-guided myth that automation will only disrupt blue-collar, or even white-collar, labor. Rather, the coming wave of automation will move way beyond the factory or public infrastructure and into knowledge work. Used as we are to the gradual societal shifts brought about by previous change waves, often allowing decades to adjust and respond, I ask if we as a tribe are ready to abdicate our human sovereignty to the faceless forces of technology, Chapter 5, The Internet of Inhuman Things. This chapter explores the potential challenges posed by the Internet of Things, a dominant narrative within digital transformation. But have we paused to ask ourselves the difference between algorithms and what makes us essentially human, what I call the androithms? 
Will the internet of inhuman things gradually and then suddenly require us to forego our humanity and become ever more mechanistic just to remain relevant? As computing becomes mobile, then wearable and interactive, and even ingestible or implantable, will our distinct planetary advantage as a species be sacrificed for a spurious digital hit? Chapter 6, Magic to Manic to Toxic. Here I examine how our love affair with tech often follows a predictable curve from magic to manic to, ultimately, toxic. As we allow ourselves to experience life as an ever more mediated and processed sequence of encounters, we may think we are enjoying ourselves. But in reality we are simply being hotwired by our smart technologies and increasingly targeted by the purveyors of amazing new gadgets. As we wave through the all-night honeymoon party that is technological progress, it's salutary to think about the hangover, the price to be paid tomorrow and forever. Chapter 7, Digital Obesity. This chapter discusses how digital obesity, albeit not as familiar as the physical kind, is rapidly developing into a wave of unprecedented proportions. As we, as we pick out on the glut of news, updates, and algorithmically engineered disinformation, we entertain ourselves in this burgeoning tech bubble of questionable values. Taking into account the coming tidal wave of new technologies and digital engagement platforms, it's high time to think about digital nutrition just as we already do about how we nurture our body. Chapter 8, Precaution versus Proaction. This here, I present the argument that the safest and still most promising future is one where we do not postpone innovation. But neither do we dismiss the exponential risks that are involved and hand them over as somebody else's problem. The bills passed on to the next generation for today's new technology gambles are significant, and the downsides will be unprecedented in scale. I argue that precaution and proaction are both insufficient to deal with a combinatory, exponential scenario where waiting will be as dangerous as racing ahead. In this context, transhumanism, with its lemming-like rush to the edge of the unknown, represents the scariest of all present options. Chapter 9 on happiness. Money talks, but happiness remains the bigger story. Happiness is not only considered the ultimate goal of human existence across philosophies and cultures, it also remains an elusive factor resistant to exact measurement or technological replication. As big tech simulates the quick hits of hedonistic pleasure, how can we protect the deeper forms of happiness that involve empathy, compassion, and consciousness? How will we use technology to limit the risks of human life and still preserve its mystery and spontaneity? Chapter 10, Digital Ethics. Here I argue that as technology permeates every aspect of human life and activity, digital ethics will evolve into a burning, unignorable issue for every individual and organization. At present, we do not even have a common global language to discuss the issue, let alone agreement on mutually acceptable rights and responsibilities. Environmental sustainability was often brushed aside by the developing economies as a first world problem and is always sidetracked during economic recessions. In contrast, digital ethics is forcing its way to a permanent position at the front and center of our political and economic lives. It's time to have the ethical conversation about digital technology, a potentially greater threat to continued human flourishing than nuclear proliferation. Chapter 11, Earth 2030, Heaven or Hell? As we, as we imagine the near and medium future, we can easily visualize some of the gigantic changes altering work and life out of all recognition. These are explored here. Many of these seismic changes are to be welcomed per se, like working for a passion rather than for a living. However, many of the most basic privileges we once took for granted, like freedom of choice, could become the preserves of ultra high net worth individuals. Heaven or hell, make your choice, but do it now. Chapter 12, Decision Time. In the closing chapter of Technology versus Humanity, I argue that it's crunch time for tech adoption. Not the application of technology itself, but the deeper integration and delineation of technology in human life. Numerous ethical, economic, social, and biological issues will simply not wait for another decade of debates. It's time to regulate mass technology application just as we would any other transformational force such as nuclear power. I am hoping that my book can be the beginning of a conversation that needs to become mainstream in our media, our schools, our government, and our boardrooms. The time for technologists and technocrats to simply hand the ethical bug over to someone else has passed. Jord Leonhardt, Technology vs. Humanity, 2016